from Washington, D.C. The Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception and the Eternal Word Television Network present the opening mass of 24 hours for the Lord with His Eminence Wilton Cardinal Gregory, Archbishop of Washington, as celebrant and homilist.
Good afternoon. It is my delight as rector to welcome you to this Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception as we begin our observance of 24 hours for the Lord and solemn exposition of the Most Blessed Sacrament, which is most commonly known as 40 Hours Devotion. The initiative 24 Hours for the Lord was begun by our Holy Father Pope Francis during the 2015-2016 Jubilee Year of Mercy as a moment of intense prayer that will enable people to touch the grandeur of God's mercy. Pope Francis asked that this initiative be continued as a means to experience the richness of God's mercy. And so at the conclusion of Mass, we'll process with the Blessed Sacrament to the front vestibule of the National Shrine, where our Lord will remain exposed throughout the entire night for all those wishing to spend some time in prayer before the Most Blessed Sacrament. During the next two days, we will have adoration throughout the day in the Lord's Chapel, and then beginning at five o'clock in the afternoon, we will continue exposition throughout the night in the vestibule. We are privileged to have Cardinal Whitland Gregory as the celebrant for tonight's Mass. Cardinal Gregory is the Archbishop of Washington and the Chairman of the National Shrine Board of Trustees. We welcome in a very special way those who join us at home through our live stream broadcast and the Eternal Word television network. May these days of Eucharistic devotion, these 48 hours for the Lord, bring God's mercy and abundant blessing to all come before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and unite us with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us pause before we dare to hear the word of God and share together the bread of life and ask for the Father's merciful forgiveness. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O oh God, who will that your word should take in on the re reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. A virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. My brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, as it is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifice and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel 
according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. My dearest brothers and sisters in Christ, we would almost certainly all agree that today is much too early to begin thinking about Christmas. We have just begun to enjoy some warmer springtime weather. The tidal basin cherry trees are in full flower, which tells us that the earth is coming to life again. Easter is still several weeks away as the church continues our Lenten journey. Why, even the retailers who make so much of the Christmas sales and anticipate its arrival well before the start of Advent would find it a bit odd to begin thinking about Christmas at this early date. But that is exactly what the church asks us to do with this happy feast of the Annunciation of the Lord Jesus. God's own kindness 
sends the archangel Gabriel to Mary and asks her to become the mother of his own son. Mary's answer is the jewel of today's gospel. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Absolute, complete, perfect submission to the will of God. Oh, how I wish that I could offer my own life with such perfect openness. How I wish that I could obey God with such simple joy. How I wish I could trust with Mary's obvious confidence. I know that many young people may find it difficult to be obedient at home, at school, and with people who are adults and thus responsible for their well-being. I have a secret for all of our young people. It does not get any easier to be obedient when you become adults. Some of our youth might wish at times that they were already adults so that no one could tell them what to do. There never comes a time in our lives when there is no person without authority over you. My brothers and sisters, we all know that such a time of absolute freedom never occurs. Adults must learn to be obedient to those with authority, and it is not always easy. Obedience, real Christian obedience, is not something that we reluctantly offer to those in authority over us. Mary's response was not half-hearted or conditional. It was sincere, quick, and joyful. She said with her whole heart that she wanted to do God's will for her with absolute openness. Obedience is not a popular topic in our society because we sometimes think of obedience as almost un-American because it means that we are not perfectly free. And freedom is such a high value in our society and in our world. Obedience is not a lack of freedom, but the proper use of freedom. Obedience is the virtue that allows our hearts to desire only what God wants for us and from us. Mary, Mary's obedience is a model obedience for the church, for young people, and for religious and clergy. It might be too early to begin thinking about Christmas but since the virtue and the practice of obedience takes such a long time for any of us to perfect, perhaps it is not too early to begin thinking about Christmas if the obedience of Mary to do the will of God is how the church begins to prepare for the birth of Jesus. As we get ready to spend quiet time before the exposed blessed sacrament, let us all pray for a true sense of obedience to God's will. As Christ himself was obedient to his Father's will, and Mary freely made herself God's servant, may we each come to follow their humble acceptance of whatever God might ask of us. Christ leaves us the gift of himself in the Eucharist. He also leaves that example of perfect submission to the will of his Father. 
Let our prayer before the Eucharist over these next several hours repeat Mary's and Jesus' obedience and bring us all a more profound awareness of what God might be asking of us at this early anticipated moment before Christmas. And then in silence and in prayer, let us repeat Mary's words, be it done to me according to God's will. Amen. Together now, let us offer our prayer of faith. I believe in one God, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for his men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was it born of the Lord Virgin Mary, and he became man. He became man. For our sake, sake he was crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United to Christ in the Eucharist, let us seek the blessings that will bring us to everlasting life. That the sacramental grace given in the Eucharist may help transform the body of Christ on earth and allow us to reflect more perfectly God's unconditional love and mercy for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will bless all those who lead and serve our nation, especially our nation's military personnel. May their dedicated labor foster true peace and freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace throughout areas of the world torn by war, persecution, violence, and aggression, especially in Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this Lenten season will encourage many to devote their lives in service to the poor, the marginalized, immigrants and refugees, the sick and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will respond with faith and courage to God's call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and religious. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked for our prayers and for the intentions entrusted by our benefactors and pilgrims to the National Shrine's Lenten Remembrance 
and Prayer Guild Novena. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may partake of the heavenly banquet God has prepared for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill your people, O Lord, we pray, with hope in your divine mercy. May the gift of the body and blood of your Son help us on our pilgrimage, pilgrim way to eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promises to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Wilton our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 